Are you looking to build a first aid kit? Well, in this video, I'm gonna break down my kit and show you how to build one for you and your family. Stay tuned. Hello, friends and family. Thanks for checking in. For anyone new here, my name is Russell Liston, and I'm here to help you as you prepare every needful thing. Today's topic is how to build the best first aid kit. That's right, I said the best first aid kit. And by that, I mean any kit that you take the time to study, plan, and think about is going to be the best kit for you because you know what's in it and you know how to use it. It's basically an extension of what's going on up here. So the more experience you have or training that you receive will make this even more the best kit for you. And I've found that you just can't get that with a first aid kit that you picked up off the shelf or ordered off the internet. It just isn't the same. I hope that as we go through this, you'll see how simple and easy it is to make your very own first aid kit. Let's get into it. The first obstacle to overcome is choosing a container. There are so many options and so many different um, designs and styles of things you can choose to make as your first aid kit. And I've tried about them all. And right now my current one is the Craftsman Versus Stack. Let me explain why. This is actually a two box system. There's a lower box and there is this upper box. The lower box has these nice two drawers that are somewhat shallow and easy to look and get inside of. And then the upper one is a box that you can put larger items into and be able to get to easily. I've found that if you just have a, a big deep box, it's hard to see what's happening at the bottom. And so I've chosen one or found one that has shallow drawers and a shallow top so I can see everything that's in the containers. Because the VersaStack system locks together, you can pick and choose how you want your system to be. If you want more drawers, you can add another layer of those. Or if you want a larger box, you can change that here. You can kind of customize it to make the system work however you'd like it to be. Once you choose your container, now we need to fill it up. Spend a little bit of time thinking about what you want to have in your kit and what's going to work best for your family. I've tried to pick things that my family has used or does use or things that I think my family would use in the right circumstances. To help explain this, I've broken the kit down into four general areas or groups to try to make it easier, easier to identify what the items are in the kit. I forgot to mention that the VersaStack drawers actually have some divider bars inside of them and I'm actually going to take a few of these out because I want the drawer openings to be a little bit bigger to hold the things that I'm doing. But you'll see how that works as we put the system together. The first group that I wanted to go over is what I'm calling the tools. And these are just items that I keep in this little drawer. I've got a couple pair of exam gloves. I've got a scalpel and a couple tongue depressors. Um, I like to keep a thermometer and a little light in case you need to shine around and see what's going on inside or see what, what's happening in the dark. A multi-tool that comes in very handy at times along with a syringe to irrigate out a wound. I keep a little shaver in case that is needed along with a Bic lighter. Um, safety pins can be very handy along with a pair of tweezers. And fingernail clippers, although not necessarily first aid, become, they are very handy and they disappear very quickly. So keep an eye on those. And finally, the last tool is just some trauma shears, very handy and useful for all sorts of applications. And those are the tools that I like to keep in this little drawer. The next group, or what I'm referring to as wound care or your bandages, I like to keep in this bottom drawer of the kit. And kind of work our way across. So the first ones are just some cleaning towels, towelettes, some BZK antiseptic and some alcohol uh, prep pads. One of the main items in the kit that is a go-to is just our Neosporin along with just our regular bandages. And I like to keep those front and center so that they are very easy to get to. And then over in this other corner, we keep, I keep a few rolls of gauze along with this self adhering tape and those fit nicely there. Then moving to the back row, 
I like to keep an assortment of just gauze pads, some two by two, three by three, and four by four size gauze pads, and those fit nicely back there. Moving on, I keep a couple rolls of tape in the kit, along with some clotting um, agent to help with some bleeding, along with some non-adhesive pads, and again, a few different sizes, some two, what size were those? Two by three and three by four size pads. So those fit nicely back here in this area. Along with our couple of rolls of tape. And then the last thing in this drawer are just an assortment of bandages. It's just nice to have a variety of things from some moleskin to help with blisters to some rectangle, rectangle bandages along with some a knuckle bandage, a finger bandage, some of this new skin liquid bandage along with a few steri strips. And these are just some larger, um, kind of a knee, like an oversized regular uh, bandage, the larger size of that. And all of these just kind of fit nicely back here in this corner. It's just nice to have a variety of things so that depending upon what's going on, you have options of how you want to do that. And then that set just closes up nicely. I have a few other bandages, some very large abdominal pads. Um, I just keep a couple of these in the kit just in case you need a larger bandage. There wasn't enough room on the bottom drawer, so they've made their way to the next size drawer. And then just some cotton swabs um, that I have, so I just keep those in there in case you need those for some purpose. And that's the bandage and wound care items. This next group is what I'm calling the medicine. It can be either pills or ointments. It can be over the counter or prescription. It's things that your family uses. And so think about your family and what type of things you take. If you have little kids, maybe you'll need more younger aged items. And then as you get older, you'll just use the things that your family is used to taking. So think about that as you put together your medicines. For me, we have a number of different things here. We've got some cortisone cream along with some afterbite that I like to keep down here in this drawer. And then I have a couple of these little packets of burn shield in case we happen to have a burn situation. From there, I, now we're moving up to the box up top for the taller items. I have um, a couple different cold medicine type things. So here's some chest rub along with some Hall's Relief uh, cough medicine and also some sore throat medicine. Um, I do keep some cold and flu medicine in here along with some motion sickness. I guess motion sickness isn't really a cold. I have a few different kinds of allergy pills because for some reason my family suffers from allergies. So we keep a variety of those in there. And then we have our pain medication, our ibuprofen, and our Tylenol um, varieties of medicines. And it's nice with this big box because you can actually use, actually use larger containers of pill bottles. So you don't just have to get individual uh, pills or the smaller bottles. We can use the larger bottles in this kit. I may have to lay it down, but it still fits. And then for stomach type issues, we do have some Pepto-type pills along with some anti-diarrheal and some Tums for our stomach situations. Um, I do keep a few different medications in the box that we have as a family or that I need and so I keep those in here. And then we also have a little bottle of this BioFreeze to help with sore muscles. And so see, these are some of the medications that we keep in the box because they are things that my family uses. And so I would suggest that you think about what your family uses and those are the things that you'll want to have in this kit. The last group is just other stuff. They're just things that I like to keep in the kit just because we, we use them. And so some of those items are just a small bottle of hand sanitizer, a, again a small bottle of Vaseline, and a couple little bottles of this eye, eye clean, in case we need to irrigate the eye. So just a couple small bottles of those. Um, also some splinting materials. So one of these little Sam type splints. Um, a couple triangle bandages to work with, again, splinting. 
and a elastic bandage for wrapping up different things. Um, a couple of these instant cold packs are nice to have on hand. So we keep a few of those in there. Also just some first aid, uh, first aid manual, just a little book to help remind us of how things might need to be done if we can't remember. So that's helpful. And with that, some paper and a few markers to either write notes or to send a message or whatever is needed to be used with that. So just a few things extra to have on hand in the kit. And because it's your kit, you can pretty much put into it whatever you'd like. And so these are things that we have used over the years and we are wanting to have in our kit. And so it's nice to know what we've got and what's in there. Congratulations, that's it. That's how simple it is to build a first aid kit. For me, there's a little peace of mind about having a first aid kit. When your kids are hurt or bleeding, or they have a sliver or a sore throat or a cough or whatever is going on, you have something here that can help them. And that just feels good. As a parent, it's nice to know that you have taken the time to try to be prepared to be able to help your family out in whatever situation you may find yourself in. What I have loved about this kit is that it's a one stop for all of our medical needs. My family knows what's in it and they know how to use it. Not only do we use this kit at home, but we take it on road trips, camping, and basically any getaway where we go as a family. It's also part of our emergency preparedness supplies. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you found value in this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you still haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. Once again, I would like to thank you for your time and may God bless you as you prepare every needful thing. Thank you.